Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models, and this is part two of my build of Tamiya's ISU-152. In the first episode, I experimented with a black and white technique to get a bit more stylistic finish with that Russian 4BO paint. In this episode, I'm going to finish the detail painting, but also do the first couple of layers of weathering. First, I wanted to have the markings literally painted on, so I traced out a pattern of my favorite number, 27, on both sides and then using this washable white paint and a small brush I was able to outline and make a fairly half decent hull number. I might add to this later with some oil paints for a bit more interest but from now it'll do. Next it was time to do some more paint variation. I started with the speckling method using a very light green. The technique here is about removing almost all the paint from the sponge and then just lightly going over the whole surface, not just the corners with the sponge making the paint a bit more random and worn all over. This is quite therapeutic, if a little bit unrealistic, but hey, it gives a lot of visual interest for later layers. You can always remove any large blotches you make with a bit of water and a cotton bud if you go a bit overboard. I then switched to a brush to make some proper chips, putting them in locations that made a bit more sense and add another layer of wear and tear. Don't forget to add chips to the tools and stowage as well, or the top machine gun. Or the flip all the fuel tanks, which I also added a lot of longitudinal scratches, because they're a different material. So here's the complete result, breaking up the black and white effect and I added more longer scratches down the sides as well and also on that thin metal mantlet cover. Time to detail paint the tools. With the metal effects I go over first with a neutral grey and then I add a darker grey along the edge. Next I use a grey or a black grey wash and add some shadows, but also just some splotches here and there. Moving to an orange brown wash, this gives the hint of rust and wear. For the timber pieces though, like these gun cleaning rods, I grabbed a handful of different acrylic browns, painting each rod in different colours. That can actually vary quite a bit as resulting brown enamel wash will tie them all together. I add some highlights and shadows to do grain effects with different colours before the wash which also gives a nice effect.
For the fuel tanks, I wanted to add a blue filter to show it's a slightly different material. You could add some green or other filters overall over the whole tank as well, but the black and white effect does that so far. Moving to the stowage, I started with the timber crate using the same system for the gun cleaning rods. before moving to the captured German ammunition box. I painted this in a panzer grey bluish colour before adding highlights in the edges and on the handles. Oh, I also painted those wires I raped around the hull with a dark grey black mix. Next it was time to paint the tarp, or it might end up being a flag, I'm not sure yet. I pre-painted in white and then added a matte red. My life colour paints didn't really work too well here, so I switched to Vallejo and got a much better, richer result. Something was missing from the stowage though, so I added this German fuel can from the Mini Art set. The decals worked beautifully on this, and I can highly recommend this set. Now it's time to do the spare tracks. I painted each track in a different shade of grey. I went quite wide in the values here, as you can see. with some blending as well, but I wanted to make them as different as possible. Next I hit each of those portions with a different coloured enamel wash. Just to start with, trying to keep the same tones, but it's starting to come together. I wasn't going too far on this since the next stage would include some exposed whitewash and mud, but I think it works for now. Finally I added some chips, using a darkish grey to the teeth and exposed edges, just using a sponge method. For the exhaust I used the Life Colour Rust Set. I went a bit overboard here, but I wanted to show you what you can do with these very, very matte paints. They actually create a texture by, you know, if you start with the lightest and then build up to the darker tones and adding uh, layers, you can vary where you put the next color and build up that matte paint. And you sort of replicate a rough, rusty surface. After I did that, I added a final burnt umber layer. This is very diluted and wet before adding some orange uh, enamel wash. And here I applied it to the uh, fuel tanks as well. We're almost there. For the machine gun up top, I painted the barrel in a darkish gray. But then I picked out various parts in different coloured blacks, just to break it up a bit, before dry brushing on some silver, just to show some worn metal effects. Remember just to add those effects to the leading edges of the barrels, and uh, other parts like the ammo cases. To lock this all in, I used a clear coat. I don't normally do this, but I didn't want to have to worry about clean up with the pin wash that was coming up.
For the pin wash, I used a blend of the two darkest Tamiya enamel washes and a liner brush. The gloss coat has helped in keeping the wash where I wanted it and only required very, very minor cleanup afterwards with a small brush dipped in enamel thinner. This dark wash really gives life to the beast killer and especially highlights where I've made cut marks to the armor plating and with the extra weld beads and all the other details all over. I have made a few layers here so it's not just one wash and I wanted to enhance shadows as well. So here's the final product, ready for a matte coat to seal it all in before the next stage of weathering. In the final episode, I'm going to add a whitewash to the front and weather and paint up those tracks before adding lots of mud and splatter to show this vehicle in late winter, early spring. So until next time, thanks for watching and happy modelling.